setting and changing file and directory permissions. Let's look at the contents of this directory, perm, in long format. There is one file, hello.py, which has these permissions, read, write, but not execute, for the user, read, write, but not execute, for the group, and no permissions for anybody who is not the user or outside of the group. Without execute permissions, we will not be able to run hello.py. We can change the permissions of hello.py using chmod. This command gives the user represented by U, the group represented by G, gives those two entities execute permissions represented by X to the file hello.py. You see now that the user and the group both have execute permissions. You may notice that the file name color has changed as well. That may not happen in your case. It depends on the way your environment is set up. chmod can use any combination of U for the user, G for the group, O for others, or A for all of the above to represent the entities to whom permissions may be given or from whom permissions may be taken away. chmod uses R, W, and X to represent read, write, and execute permissions, respectively. Plus adds permissions. Minus takes away permissions. And there are other options as well. But by using any combination of these three letters, or possibly this letter on the left hand side of an operator like plus or minus and then using any combination of these three letters on the right hand side of the plus or minus or other operators we can affect that permissions are given or taken away from those groups What do you think this command will do to the permissions of hello.py? Now everybody has execute permissions. chmod a represents all plus add x add execute permissions to this file in the same way
execute permissions can be taken away from everybody. There's another way to set permissions with chmod. We can use octal notation. Think of octal notation like this. We can represent r read permissions with the number 4, write permissions with the number 2, and execute permissions with the number 1. Now if we add any two or all three of these numbers together, we will get a unique number. For instance, 4 plus 2 equals 6, and there is no other combination that gives us 6. 1 plus 2 gives us 3, and there is no other combination that gives us 3. 4 we can only get by taking 4 on its own. And so we can use numbers to represent combinations of read, write, and execute. For example, 6 we can only get as 4 plus 2. In other words, w plus r, or rather r plus w. Using octal notation, we'll give three numbers to the file whose permissions we want to modify. The three numbers represent the user, the group, and others, respectively. 6 is a combination of 4 and 2. Therefore, we will give read and write permissions to the user, likewise to the group, and no permissions to others. What three numbers should we use if we want to give all permissions to the user, read permissions to the group, and no permissions to others. The combination 740 accomplishes this. Now the user can read, write, and execute. The group can read and others can do nothing. Let me set these permissions to what I want them to be. Now, Let's create a new file. Let's also create a new directory. You'll see that the new file and the new directory already have permissions given to them. Where did these permissions come from? UMask tells us what the default permissions for new files and new directories will be. To read a UMask, think again of the octal notation, where 4 equals read, u, sorry, 2 equals write, and 1 equals execute. 
But this time, we're not giving permissions, we are masking permissions. So here's how to read this. Let's ignore the first number and concentrate on only the last three numbers. The second number of the four are the permissions masked to the user. The first number is zero, therefore no permissions are masked to the user. Otherwise stated, the user will be given all permissions. Same with the group, but for others, all permissions will be masked. Read, write, execute. 4, 2, 1. 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. None of those permissions will be given. They will all be masked with UMask. You can change the UMask. Say I wanted to mask write permissions from the group. UMask plus a set of four numbers allows me to change the UMask. UMask on its own allows me to see what my current UMask is. You can see by executing this command here, I have changed the value of UMask. Let's see what that does to new permissions. Whereas before, execute permissions were not masked, or rather, write permissions were not masked from the group for the first new directory created. Under the new umask, those write permissions have been masked from the group. Same with the second new file we created. Now the right permissions have been masked from the group. You may notice that execute permissions are never given on new files. If you think about it, that makes sense. It's undesirable to have every newly created file have execute permissions. It's more desirable to specify when a certain file is meant to be an executable. Directories, on the other hand, it is highly desirable to have them executed upon creation. Without executable permissions, the user, the group, or anybody who has read or write permissions will not be able to do any of the functions that they can do with read or write permissions.